Like, yeah. <laughs> We're definitely going to circle back around to your drug enterprise days because those are fascinating. Mm -hmm. But uh, I'm really interested in the hellhole that was your prison and how it became so much worse by accident. It, correct me if I'm wrong here, but it, your bail was something like three quarters of a million dollars initially, right? Initially, yeah. And your yeah. family all got together and uh, and 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 raised, uh, mortgaged a home, and uh, a relative of yours who was a retired policeman came and spoke on your behalf at a at a bail hearing to try to get that reduced so that potentially you could you could get out and get back on the street again to, until you await, await trial, I suppose. And that backfired, right? The bail was doubled to one point five million dollars cash only, and I was yep. re allocated from medium security <laughs> to maximum security now i'd seen the cockroaches here and there but i got to my cell in max security at about two in the morning and there's a bit of light slanting in from the day room i notice it's only a two-man cell there's two bunks at the back of the wall go mm -hmm. in and i'm wondering why my cell is asleep on the top bunk because where i come from people fight over the bottom bunk thinking something's not quite right walking a little bit around in the cell, something drops off the ceiling and bounces off my shoulder. Like, what was that? Looking at the walls and the ceiling, there's like a swirl effect. And I'm thinking, all right, my eyes are playing tricks. So I put my face right up to the wall and it's just absolutely covered in American cockroaches. Nothing like I'd ever seen before Jesus in my Christ. life. <laughs> so I'm thinking, all right, how's, how's, how's he asleep up there? He's wrapped. A sheet around him. So, <laughs> eight at night is locked down. Ten lights out. The roaches know when the lights are about to go out. They start <laughs> lining up in the cracks in the wall in this old building, doing this little movement with their antennae sticking out, like an army waiting to invade. So as soon as the lights go out, they just flood the room. You've got a choice. Wrap the sheet around you. you. Look like the mummy. Leave a breathing hole. It does keep them off you. But this is the Sonoran Desert. It's almost um, 50 degrees UK temperature, 120 US temperature in the summer. <laughs> and there's a vent at the back of the cell attached to what's called a swamp cooler. The only time that air was blowing was when the county health inspector walked through the building. And as soon as he left, it went back to the broken setting. And what I mean is we would ask the guards why it's working and just say, oh, it's broken. So <laughs> wrap the sheet around me. And, and I've already got all these bleeding skin infections and bed sores from the heat. And when you wrap that sheet around you, you just start sweating so much and, the, and you're itchy. Your skin has turned soggy because you're sweating every single day. You scratch yourself, clumps of your own skin detach under your nails. So in the end, I just throw the sheet off and let the cockroaches crawl on me. So you were just now, slowly decomposing every night. Yeah, rotting away. It looked like a spilt battery acid on my leg at one point. I had this just big, like, infection on my leg. Because <clears throat> I'm sat on my ass a lot, I'm getting all these bed sores on my butt. And um, I, I, I put a tank order in, a medical request to see this doctor, and he tells me to drop my drawers, as he, and he's going to check my ass out. And then he just goes to grab my dick, and I pull back. I'm like, whoa, there's nothing wrong with my dick. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> I'm sorry, sir. Just I'm just seeing if you can get hard. I'm just seeing if you can get. Hard. I'm just seeing if you can come. I'm just seeing if you can come. Yes. When I got back to the medical waiting room, every other prisoner said he tried to grab their dicks as well. But back to the Roch story. Yeah. So sheet around you, it is way too hot and itchy. So you just throw the sheet off, let them crawl on you. Now they don't bite. They tickle your feet, tickle your legs. I woke up so many nights and tickling my hands. I. You know, um, I flinch now if, if, if someone tickles my hands. But the, they get on your face, mouth, nose. The favorite place of all is going in your ears to eat your earwax. It's like honey to them. Oh. Literally, I, 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 I oh. had a little piece of towel and I washed my ear. I washed the earwax out of my ear one time with this little piece of towel and I hung it near the sink. And the cockroaches, they crawled on the little piece of towel and they were pulsing right on where the earwax was. Like, honey, this is our honey. Give, feed me. That's brilliant. A sacrificial towel. <laughs> well, I had a neighbor. I had a neighbor. I knew who where was it came from. I had a neighbor who was asthmatic. Wakes up one morning out of breath, grabs his inhaler, takes a blast. 
shoots a live cockroach inside himself. <laughs> starts freaking out, saying he can feel it moving around. <laughs> oh. he, he, he throws up his stomach contents, and somehow it's stuck inside him, and it won't even come out. Even in the daytime, there were so many prisoners were doing cockroach races on the day room tables, <laughs> gambling on who would be the winner. Now, over time, you've got to just harmonize with your environment. And I was living with the cockroaches in that maximum security Madison Street jail for about a year. So in the end, you know, I'm just chilling with them, watching their habits. They communicate through these chemical smells. If you threaten them, then like these warrior ones come running under your door, like, you know, what's up, what's up over here? <laughs> <laughs> Some of them have, have um, little pouches of babies. It looks like a section of a worm. And if they manage to get that under your bunk, and I, I would find them like attached to books and stuff, all the babies hatch. And they go absolutely everywhere. Not the but babies. they will, yeah, all the little baby cockroaches, they're just all over the wall, just swirling and swirling, swirling. There was white ones. I don't know whether they were albinos or they were shedding their skin. <laughs> um, so, and I, they, people say they would survive a nuclear attack, and I agree. They, yeah. If you throw them in the toilet, they look like they're drowned. They're like this. But the little bastards are actually holding oxygen to themselves. <laughs> <laughs> and then I saw people just smash them and like completely flat. I'm reading my book, look over an hour later, and the fingers reform, reform. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's just gone on to have a nice day. So, so there yeah. was no concern at all. Obviously, obviously there was no concern. So the prison themselves were like, all right, it's fine for every single inmate to just live in a sea of cockroaches. And that's just the way they live. And I'm sure that also made everybody a little on edge. Sleep's not great. And so probably made it more violent, more shitty, just a circular, you know, pattern there, right? Absolutely. The violence was nonstop. 